Hello and welcome back to our tutorial. Today we'll be looking at something slightly more complicated called pulse width modulation. It is used to produce analog value and then after that we'll look at how we can use something else to generate a random analog value. So without further ado, let's start our new circuit. So today it will be exercise 3.5. Okay, so to do that, we will need to use an Arduino. So basically, if you zoom in on Arduino, you'll notice that there's something called PWM over here. And you say PWM and with a symbol over here. Which means any port that has this symbol will be able to produce PWM signal, which is pulse width modulation signal. So these pulse width modulation signals are listed in 3, 5, 6, 9, 10, and 11. So what is pulse width modulation? It is actually basically a way that use digital signal, produce it in a way so that it actually simulate an analog signal. Okay, what is analog signal? We have analog in over here. Okay, this bit are analog. Basically, they can be used to read analog value. So if you notice, there's an in over here. That means they can only be used to read analog value. We will use PWM to produce to generate analog signal. Okay, but what are they exactly? We have previously talked about digital. Okay, which means it's a signal that can only be turned on or off. So there's only two states, either it's on or off. And if it's on, it's 5 volts. Okay? In this digital port, if it's on, it's 5 volts. If you are defining it as digital. What PWM do is that it will actually make the value into something between 0 and 5 volts. Okay? Split into equal brackets of 0 to 255. That's mean it can be used to produce anything between 0 to 5 volts, like 3.3 volts, 3.2 volts, 1.5 volts, 0 0.5 volts, and etc. So anything that is zero, be, between 0 to 5 volts. Okay, so we'll actually try to simulate that. So let's put in a breadboard, okay, and then connect the ground. To control the, the value, it is best simulate using LED. So we'll be using LED and we will actually be using RGB LED because we remember that RGB LED, if you match different brightness, it can produce different color. So this cathode line, remember, you just connect it to our ground. Okay. And then for RGB LED, we'll still need resistor, which is 200 ohm. We'll need one two, three of them, okay? After that, we can connect the three to any of those that can produce analog signal, which is this three, uh, sorry, any of these five, okay? So let's try to connect this one to maybe number nine, okay? This is the red color, so I'll change the wire to red, okay? The middle one is blue color, so I'll change it to blue later. Okay, let's say if I connect it to number 5 now. Okay, and then another one, I can connect it to number 3. So my wire part already done. Okay, I'll be using number 3, 5, and 9 to produce different signal. So now, let's go to decoding part. Okay, in order to produce analog signal, we'll also use output. Because basically input is for signal going in, output is for signal going out. If you notice, we have set pin. These are the numbers that can be set to high or low. Okay, but below that, we can actually set pin to a value. Like I say just now, the minimum value is 0 and the maximum value is 255. Okay, they are used to represent 0 volts to 5 volts. Okay. We'll be using 3, which is 3, 5, and 9. So let's duplicate 3 of them, 3, 5, 
and 9. Okay, let's say if we set the value to 255, which is the maximum value. Okay, when you set it to maximum value, it will be equivalent to 5 volts. So when you do that, this one will turn into white color as if you just turn them on. Okay, we can do a further test by changing the middle one, the blue color, to zero. So you will get a mixture of red and green, which produce yellow. Okay. But this is basically just on and off, right? So let's try to set it into some other number, like 120. Okay, you'll notice that it will be light blue now. Uh, sorry, light yellow now. And let's say if I change a bit, now I change the red color to be stronger. Then we'll notice that it will now produce an orange, which is basically yellow, where the, uh, red and green are equal, changing to red stronger which is orange color so this shows you that we can actually manipulate value over here to produce different color instead of just using potential meter because this pwm can be used to produce different voltage which we um, when we talk about potential meter is how it generate different color in rgb led okay so that's the analog output. Basically, analog outputs means that it can produce any value that is not just 0 and 5, but anything in between. Okay, the next little bit we want to see, we'll first have to put weight. Okay, so that we can change the number to a bit lower so that we'll be able to see a lot of quick changes. What we want to do next is we can go to map and look at this third one called pick random. Pick random will be able to randomly pick a number between the range that you have selected. Like for example, if you put 1 to 10, it will pick value from 1 to 10. But we know that if it 1 to 10, it will be very little different in terms of the color. So let's make it into the full range, which is, which is 0 to 255. And duplicate a total of 3 of them, like this. What will happen now is that as soon as you turn it on, it will generate the random value between 0 to 255 for all three of them and produce a, diff a random color over here. After 0 0.2 seconds, it will generate the next color. So when you press start, okay, it will start to keep changing color every 0 0.2 seconds. Okay? So this is all for today's topic. Basically, how we can use the PWM to generate analog signal, which means any value between 0 and 255 and how to use random. So today conclusion. So we can use digital port that support PWM to simulate analog signal. Arduino port that say at, um, analog can only be used to read analog signal. So they can't be really be used to produce analog signal. Okay. PWM can be used to produce value between 0 to 5 volts, which can be separated into equal portion between 0 to 255. And then we can use that to control the brightness of any LED or sound or anything else that we'll be doing much later. We can also use something called pick random to generate a random value that will change each time if you do it this way. Okay, so each time your computer is running on this code, the value will change. Okay, so that's all for today. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again in our next video. Thank you.